I find myself on the sustainability panel. I could equally have discussed maybe other things like inspections, and maybe we can get to that in the Q&A. Um, but I think uh, what I would like to do is, is just, you know, building on some of the remarks made by Apostolos is just around um, sort of what's changing, what's changing in the industry, what's changing in terms of expectations. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what's happening outside of the maritime industry and then bring that more into context in terms of what does good look like for us, what should we be aiming for. And then I'll say something about you know, the sorts of areas in which we're, we're trying to support um, these things. So if you think about it on a, on a, on a global uh, stage, on a global basis, I think the debate has moved on you know, quite considerably. I think we're now sort of at the point where people aren't so much discussing the what, but more the how. You know, how, how to do this, and I think that's probably where there's a difference of opinion. So opinion might be sort of uh, uh, around the, you know, that the, the necessity to do something. I think people are beginning to understand that, and I think um, you know, one of the very positive and proactive things, you know, in terms of the, the, the questions to the panel is that, you know, the IMO and the shipping industry has actually taken a leadership position by saying they want to do something about this, and I think that's, uh, that's very good. Uh, but we see that governments, politicians, leaders are beginning to respond to society, society's demands to do more. This is driven a lot by transparency, uh, transparency of information, you know, which is leading to, uh, to you know, to, to these sort of actions uh, by different, uh, different communities. And I think, you know, shipping does need to play its part in, um, and its role in this. So I think it's good that, uh, that, that shipping is able to take a, a leadership position. So perhaps touching a little bit on what does good look like. So in the 1780s, if you were sailing on a, on a clipper, it was quite acceptable to lose a couple of people on the voyage. Um, you know, and that's obviously where this expression, you know, your ship comes in, comes from. So extremely profitable, but extremely risky. And, you know, maybe only one out of two voyages actually made it back. If you look at, if you look at it, thankfully today, we don't have that kind of lens. Um, you know, things have moved on and we don't have this kind of expectation. You know, this, this, the, the safety has moved on tremendously in this industry, which is good to see. But I would pose this question, what's that going to look like in five years from now? Because society's expectations, industry's expectations, leaders' expectations are continuously changing. So we need to adapt to that change and we need to respond to that change. Um, I think it's very, very important that we seek a win-win because, um, you know, obviously, uh, in order to fund these things, in order to support these things, uh, companies need to be profitable. So it needs to be profitable business. It needs, we need to seek a win-win and we need to seek that across, you know, various parties. Um, you know, and, and ultimately, I think when we're aligned in terms of what's good for the environment and, and you know, even beyond the, beyond the decarbonization subject, uh, has to be good for business. And we see some areas where this is lining up and some areas where this is, where this is out of sync. Um, and I think, obviously, as, as an important part of that is being able to measure, being able to benchmark, uh, because that allows us to, um, to, to look at, at what we can do to influence and, and shape things. So, I mean, if you think about, you know, what, what we're trying to do is, if you look at those three blades of the propeller, you've got, you know, what drives us is the, the social responsibility, safety, and then on the environmental sustainability. And if you think about the hub of that propeller, that is, in our view, the intersect of what good looks like. So that, when you get um, operations that are managed in this way, where, where, where seafarers are cared for, um, where the environment is considered, where safety is, is given the right sort of priority, actually, th that in our view answers the question of what good looks like. That's a good operator, that's a good business, and that's sustainable. Um, because on the, on the ongoing basis in Ratchip, we're, we're working continuously in a triangle. Uh, we're representing 137 charters. Daily, we're in communication with them. So we're talking directly to the cargo interests. We're talking directly to the ship operators daily. Um, you know, we, when we bring the ports and the terminals into this as well, what we're trying to do is to make a safe and commercially successful voyage because that feeds everything else. Touching a little bit on the greenhouse gas rating and, and you know, to stress that it's a relative measure of efficiency. It's not an absolute measure. You know, we realize that, that it's not a real-time measure. Um, I don't think we're quite there yet. 
but what we're, what we're trying to do is to pro provide a comparison between vessels of similar size and type. And we're basing that, let's say, on an international instrument so that we're not doing that, let's say, regionally. And it aims to reward um, those operators, companies that are investing more in, in efficiency. Uh, and we've seen that this has grown, uh, you know, uh, over, the, over the last period. The interest in this has grown over the last period quite dramatically. So if we look at um, a sort of conversions or, 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 or upgrades, um, we've actually seen quite, quite a high number of these now, um, and they're actually falling into two categories. The orange bars really where uh, something's been done to change um, the, the propulsion um, upgrade, and then the, the dark bars are sort of machinery upgrades. And sometimes we're challenged about those where, where we're, we're limiting the engine power, really what is, what is happening is we're just snipping the top of that engine curve. So if you're a Cape size bulk carrier at 19,800 kilowatts, you bring that down to 18,800, you're taking the top of the curve off, you're not affecting the uh, dynamic range of the engine, um, it's not affecting the, um, uh, the engine performance in the, in the lower ranges, but really what you're trying to do is to limit the opportunity for that extra, extra 0.1 or 0.2 of a knot to, um, you know, to, to, to increase the power. And we've seen others, others have similar thoughts in terms of, uh, of, of doing that. So this is just an example of, of, of how sort of the industry is responding and we're constantly working with operators to evaluate that. And the invitation is there is to check your greenhouse gas rating, which is available, it's freely available, you can view it check that, check the details, check the speed uh, and what it, whatever is input into that so that we can confirm that because we've gone through a process of validating a lot of these records. And if you think about it, you know, there's a lot that can be done today. So there's a lot of discussion about 2030 and 2050 and it's extremely important. But our, our, our suggestion is that there's a lot that can be done already. So, you know, here's an example of a vessel where, all granted, they did the full works, uh, and they did this on six. They did this on one uh, chemical tanker, and then they rolled this out to another 16. But they were able to actually get real, um, real improvements in efficiency. And I would suggest that there's still quite a big opportunity to, <clears throat> to, um, to build in, um, you know, significant improvements with the existing fleet, which means you don't necessarily have to go to new buildings to. Uh, to have an impact today, and I think that's also important given the current freight environment. A little bit on benchmarking of carbon, you know, as I mentioned, society, uh, banks, um, uh, all various different parties' cargo interests are increasingly interested in benchmarking carbon and understanding the carbon footprint of scope three emissions. We've seen a dramatic increase in interest from that, and that's not only been from charterers, but also from ship owners and operators just wanting to understand what their score is. Because when you've, when you've got a baseline, when you've got a score, when you understand what your baseline is, you can begin to measure against that. And we've got a, we've got a number of cases now beginning to develop where we're actually we're able to, to show a pathway to, to a carbon reduction. So we think that this is going to be increasingly important. Um, going forward, being able to benchmark and, and track that. So, and lastly, a couple of takeaways, you know, that I'd like to leave you with. The one is, I think that, you know, decarbonization is not only about new tonnage. There are things that you can do today. While the focus is on decarbonization, we're also looking at other emissions. But right now, let's say that, that's where the, the, the highest focus is. So it is possible to make a meaningful change today via a variety of, 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 of means uh, in a way which, uh, which, which doesn't require necessarily the construction of new ships. I think I've been in the industry 25 years and I can't think of a harder time to specify or decide what to build, um, as well as, let's say, a very challenging global environment. So the technical side is very challenging. What do you build? How do you future-proof that? The global environment is very challenging in terms of what does the market outlook look like? Um, you know, and, and the recent uh, drop in Cape freight rates is an example of that. You know, the coronavirus is an example. You get these black swan events that come along and, and completely change, um, you know, the underlying fundamentals or what you expect is going to happen. Um, <clears throat> we're also suggesting that it's important to begin to track and measure um, your carbon. Um, and then, as I mentioned, you know, in, in the earlier opening comments, let's, if you think a little bit about ESG in society, if you think about the way things are going, if you think about not only the younger generation, but there are plenty of people 
um, that are beginning to say that, well, we need to take a leadership position. We need to do something about this. And this, I think, combined with transparency is, is only going to, uh, going to increase. So I think that uh, um, we would say that we need to set ourselves up as an industry, take a leadership position, and adjust ourselves to the wind that we have. Um, and then the other thing I think is very, very important is nobody can do this alone. I think it's, it's vital that we have collaboration to deliver real gains. What I'm trying to do in RightShip is to make the organization more global, make the organization more accessible to ship operators, and work within this triangle so that we can, we can get um, real benefit, you know. So it doesn't become adversarial. It doesn't need to be charterers against owners. You know, let's work on finding a way to collaborate where the charterers are willing to come you know, to, 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 the, to, the, to the table, I guess only off the back of real demonstrated performance, not promised performance, and I think that's not an unreasonable request. So we can see that, uh, that conversation's beginning to develop. Then I've got uh, one minute left, really, just to say a little bit about more generally what, what we're doing at RightShip. Um, in, in addition to, to the globalization I mentioned, we've added 24 people in the company. Uh, that's to improve our accessibility and our responsiveness. Uh, we're also increasing our, um, we're, also, we're also providing more access to our platform and the ability to interact and engage with us. And uh, we're piloting a dry inspection pilot project for CAPE bulk carriers and ore carriers, which is temporarily on hold because of coronavirus. But uh, just to convey that in 2020, we're going to be doing uh, something about um, uh, sort of enhancing our dry inspection program. So with that, I would like to thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you very much.